Hello there, math fans. Welcome back to our journey through the real numbers. We've talked about the different types of real numbers and converting among their forms. Today, we're going to take a look at doing some arithmetic with them. Now, I promise not to go back and teach you how to manually add and subtract and multiply and divide. We're not going to go that deep into things. What we are going to do is we are going to use our Desmos scientific calculator, which I have pulled up right next to my notes. And we're going to talk about how to enter some things into the calculator so that you have um, greater success. The first thing we need to do is talk about something very quickly that may or may not be new to you. We need to take a look at the idea of absolute value. Now to talk about absolute value, I'm going to start out by drawing you a number line. And I am going to put one number on my number line. Now if we have zero in the middle, we have the positives to the right and negatives to the left. And the reason I drew you a number line is because absolute value is nothing more than the distance from zero. So let's say I pick the number negative four. If I want the absolute value of negative four, What would that look like mathematically? Well, it would look like two straight bars with a negative four in the middle. Think about them as um, parentheses that have been stretched out. Can I see what that means is I want to see how many jumps away from zero negative four is. So I would jump one, two, three, four times. Now remember, distance is never negative. And yes, you can walk backwards, but that gets into direction. That gets into math with vectors. And we're going to put that off for another time. What that also means is that if I put its opposite over here, if I put positive 4, well, that's still 1, 2, 3, 4 jumps from 0. So the absolute value of positive four is still four. What does all of that boil down to? That boils down to whatever comes out of absolute value bars is positive. Now, I want to clarify something. If you have negative absolute value of negative three, that's very different. This part is still a positive three. Absolute value of negative three means you are three jumps away from zero but that negative in front has to stay. That is not the same as what that statement in black says. If you get confused, you can always go over to your handy dandy calculator and that will help you 
figure out what's going on. If I want to type this into Desmos, I'm going to start with my absolute value button. It looks like an A with sticks on either side of it. It's right above the pie button. So I'm going to open up my absolute value bars. I'm going to do a, a negative three and I'm going to close the absolute value bars. And you can see over there on the right side, the answer is a positive three. And that's what we expected. If we go over to number two, the absolute value of positive six. Well, I know that six is six jumps away from zero, but I want to make sure that I'm remembering that correctly. So I type it into Desmos and sure enough, it tells me that the absolute value is six. <coughs> oh, Miss Graham, you've done this with only integers so far. Does it work for decimals too? Absolutely. If I type it in, sure enough, all we have to do is take off that negative sign. The absolute value of zero seems a little bit tricky at first. So I'm gonna throw another random, another random number line. It's not so random, but I am gonna throw a number line at you. I'm gonna put my zero in there. Now zero is zero units. Zero jumps from itself. So the absolute value of zero is zero. So I said before that we would um, focus more on preventing errors and entering things into the calculator rather than like when you were little and you counted bears in one pile and bears in the other pile and you added them together. So I'm going to clear out my calculator The first thing we're going to look at is what happens when you add, subtract, and multiply integers and decimals. All you are going to do when you do those three things with integers and decimals is type it in Desmos just like it looks. That's it. There's not going to be anything fancy, no tricks. If it says two times three times seven, plug it in the calculator, two times three times seven. The one thing I want you to be aware of, mainly when it comes to subtracting, but not always, is that the negative symbol And the minus, that's what a lot of my students call it, or subtract, we're going to call it the subtraction button, are the same thing. I don't know where this comes from, but I have a bajillion students who, for some reason, think that a subtraction symbol and a negative are two different things, and they absolutely are not. They are the same thing. So if you need a negative three, you push the subtraction symbol and a three. If you need four minus three, you use the same negative symbol, exactly the same button. 
Now, one of the features I really like on this Desmos Scientific Calculator is how easy it makes it to enter a fraction. Over next to, if you go down to the bottom right-hand corner where the blue enter key is, and you go up one, two, three jumps, you see a button that looks like that. This is going to be one of your best friends. When you enter a fraction, or if you have a problem that says four divided by three, this is when you're going to use this button. So you're going to start with the fraction button. And you are always going to enter the top number first if it's in fraction form, the first number first if it's in division form. Now this one you guys are gonna love. To enter a mixed number, remember a mixed number looks like four and one third. It has a whole part and it has a fraction part. You are going to enter the integer part first. So I'm gonna enter a four, then right next to it, no operations in the middle, right next to it, I'm gonna hit that A over B button, the fraction button. Then I'm going to enter the numerator, and then the denominator. If I hit the little button that looks like this, On the right side of that line, it will change my fraction to an improper fraction. If I want it to be a decimal, I can put a decimal behind the three, maybe. Nope, just kidding, it didn't work. Um, if I want that to be a decimal, I can do 13 divided by three on a new line and it'll change it to a decimal for me. So, if I want to plug that in the calculator, if I want to plug this one in, could I change it to an improper fraction? Absolutely. That happened as soon as I put in four and one third. I'm gonna do our next one. I'm gonna do four and seven eighths. So there's four. I'm gonna immediately hit the fraction button and I'm gonna put in seven over eight. And when I push enter, I shouldn't have pushed enter, I need to hit the little button. When I hit the fraction button, that becomes 39 over eight. Or if I want it as a decimal, I end up with eight. No, I don't. I was just kidding. So those are options that you have. If you need to multiply two mixed numbers, you can do that in here as well. I can do negative, that's not a negative, and enter my fraction right next to it. And then four and enter the seven eighths right next to it. I end up with negative 16.25. If I want that as an improper fraction, I could also write it as negative 65 over four. If you need to divide two fractions, you enter the first one, use the division or the fraction button to do it, and then out to the side, use the division button and enter the second fraction. That sounds ridiculously confusing, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's look at what one third divided by one half would look like. I'm gonna start with my fraction button 
and I'm gonna enter the one third. Then out to the side on that main line, I'm going to divide. And then I'm gonna hit the fraction button again and put in the one half. That's what it would look like. When you plug in into Desmos, it ends up looking a little bit intimidating. It's sort of a compound fraction, but it's not a big deal. Desmos has your back. Let's look at a few of these and how we might plug them into the calculator. Um, I'm gonna take a look at one. I would type this in as four, and then I would push that guy, and then I would put the two and the three, then the division button, and the five. So four, and then my fraction button, two on the top, three on the bottom, divided by five. You can give your answer as a decimal or as a fraction. So that one is 14 fifteenths. For two, do you need the parentheses? I want you to use them so it becomes a habit. If I put in negative 2.3 minus your parentheses, are in the bottom left corner of your keyboard for the calculator, negative 6.4. So I get a 4.1. We'll do on this a little more complicated. Let's take a look at five. I need to do four squared. The squared is on the top left side of your keyboard, minus now I need absolute value bars. Then I have a fraction inside my absolute value bars. So I'm gonna hit my fraction bar and I'm gonna type in the rest just like it looks. Again, this could be a fraction or a decimal. I'm gonna go with a fraction because they're not quite as ugly as repeating decimals. Um, and let's do this one. My main operation is division and I have two mixed numbers. Since I know my main operation is division, I'm gonna start with the division and I'm gonna put in a negative three and four fifths and six with eight elevenths. That fraction isn't much prettier than a decimal, but that's okay. All numbers matter. Um, if I wanted this rounded to the nearest thousandths place, I might have five, six, five. So either of those answers would be acceptable. It would just depend on what the directions asked you for. That is a quick rundown on using Desmos, this fabulous free calculator. That will be a huge help to you. If you have any more questions about how to use it or what you should do with certain buttons, absolutely shoot me an email and let me know.